Welcome back to my channel, In Flight Music. If you're new here, my name is Ian, and today we are continuing my coloration plugin series with Decimort 2. This video will also help you get the exact effect that Noah 40 Shabib uses for his mixes when he works with Drake. In my previous tutorial, I was using Tape Piano as my instrument plugin, but this time I decided to go with another plugin that I do plan on covering in the near future called Obsession by Synapse Audio. And the reason I chose this plugin is because it's also a hardware emulation plugin. It's actually emulating the OBXA. So this is the perfect plugin to bridge the gap from hardware emulation effects to hardware emulation synths. But let's take a listen to what this sounds like without Decimort. So a night and day difference right there. And some of you might be thinking, well, that's basically just a low pass filter. And I'll tell you right now, that's definitely not a low pass filter. And it's something that Noah 40, Drake's producer has gone over before in previous interviews. So he himself said that it's not a low pass filter. What he's actually doing is reducing the sample rate, which gets rid of a lot of the top end frequencies. And to prove that I actually have fruity parametric EQ pulled up right here. And what we're going to do, we're going to start cutting off frequencies. And first we're going to record the original signal without any of the effects into Edison. We are set to record on input. So as soon as Edison hears sound, it will start recording. So in order to see the spectrum view, just right click and go to view and then select spectrum. You can also just hit S and that'll switch back and forth from waveform view to your spectrum. So now let's see what all this information looks like when we turn Decimort on. Huge difference, right? So you could see all these frequencies above this section right here are completely cut out. So let's try to achieve that with a low pass filter. So here I have Fruity Parametric EQ pulled up and we're just gonna start filtering this until we hear where it kind of sounds similar. So you're probably already able to hear the difference between low pass filtering versus using Decimort to actually reduce the sample rate. The Decimort version somehow retains a certain character that you're losing with the low pass filter. But on top of that, let's actually look at what this looks like in the spectrum analyzer. So now we have this low cut. I decided to add a little boost right here. We'll look at this with the boost and without the boost. The reason being it sounded like there was a little bit of a boost within Decimort, which isn't true, but to get the similar sound, I went ahead and did that boost, which, which plays back into what I was saying about Decimort sounding a little more defined. So I'm gonna hit record on Edison and we'll go ahead and take a look at what this looks like through Parametric EQ2. You can see this extra information right here. Let's try to get rid of it. Let's get rid of that resonant bump that we added. Let's switch back to Decimort. So this is really telling the story right here. So you can see that as we add this cutoff, we lose a lot of extra information. And that's where we're hearing the extra clarity and detail coming out of Decimort, even though we have about the same cutoff area right here. But you could see over here, if we raise the cutoff to sort of match what Decimort is doing, we end up getting all this extra information up top. And on top of that, the information that is level match with Decimort right here, you could see that it's a lot more sparse. There's less harmonics, a lot less going on in terms of the frequencies. So the advantage of this, when you're mixing your drums, mixing your instruments, when the beat itself has has a reduced sample rate, you have all of this extra room for vocals and any of the other sounds and elements that you wanna add 
on top of all of this. And that's why Drake's vocals tend to stand out so much. It's because all these extra frequencies are cut off, but they're cut off in a way where the rest of the remaining sound is really saturated, really powerful, still has a lot of harmonics within the sound versus just using a simple cutoff filter where all you're doing is just cutting out frequencies. You're not adding any extra saturation or harmonics or anything like that. And also to prove that it's not just FL Studio's low pass filter, this applies to any low pass filter with any parametric EQ. So right here, I have a low pass filter inside of Decimort, and I'll prove to you that this is different than using the actual sample reduction. See, we have all these extra frequencies and we're trying to cut, we're trying to cut, we're trying to cut and it just gets darker and it loses a lot of the power, a lot of the extra harmonics that the resampling will provide. So that tells you it's not due to the fact that the fruity parametric EQ is not a good EQ. It works just like any other EQ. The problem is that technique is not what's being used when 40 is mixing Drake into the productions that he does. We talk about headroom all the time. This is a very satisfying way of saving headroom, especially if you're going for those darker, more chill vibes, more chill tones. You might as well use this technique versus using a low pass filter. But let me show you why you might have trouble figuring out how to do that with Decimort. So here I have Decimort with its default setting and we'll just take a listen to what this sounds like as we reduce the sample rate. So yeah, Decimort is a bit crusher at the end of the day. So what you're hearing is literally bit crushing. And the problem with that is that's not the end result that we're looking for, right? Because now we hear all these bit crushed high frequencies coming into the mix and that's not what we want. In order to fix that, what you want to do is turn on the images filter and they actually already have the frequency shift all the way down to zero, which is what you want to get rid of those high frequency bit crushed sounds. So Let's go ahead and take a listen. And you definitely want this all the way at zero. If you change this even with the smallest amount, now you're going to get those high frequencies back. Jitter is going to add more noise to the overall sound. Here's the approximation filter, which basically filters the sound before it goes into the resampler. This quantize section will also affect the sound. The higher the resolution, the better quality sound that you're going to have. 16, which is the highest it goes. And you'll hear as we drop the resolution, so will the quality. And dithering is noise shaping, so it will shape the noise that's coming out. So let's drop the resolution down to six. And you'll hear a big difference with the noise. the higher dithering tends to sound a lot smoother and brighter. DC shift, I'm not really gonna get into that. Um, that's, I'm sure that's referring to DC offset just to make the top and bottom of the waveform totally identical. Preamp, this is something that I've talked about in all of my previous tutorials about hardware emulations. Definitely use this to drive the signal more or less into the plugin and you'll get even more or less saturation from it. But that's not the only cool thing about Decimort. So if we go into the browse features, the presets here, 
uh, they actually have a lot of emulations of different hardware units. You could actually pull up an SP1200, for example. MPC. A lot of really cool presets in here for sure. You could actually go to the vintage sampler section in the filters and just click yes and it will pull up all the different samplers that they have in terms of emulation. So ASR10, CMI, MPC, SP1200, those are probably going to be the most popular ones but definitely try them all. There's a link in the description where you could purchase Decimort. If I didn't mention it, Decimort 2 is made by D16. These are two of their other plugins that I definitely want to cover in this hardware emulation series. This is a vintage tube distortion unit, and this is a multi-band distortion unit. And also look out for my upcoming series with my hardware emulation plugin instruments. Clap that like button if you like the video, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so that you stay notified whenever I drop these new videos. Take care.